Here I have a cubic equation. All right, highest power three is cubic. means it's not quadratic. OK, now watch. First, I use the zero principle. I'll subtract 10 W. From both sides of the equation. And that will give me. 10 W cubed minus 10 W. Equals zero. This is a binomial, two terms. In fact, it's a cubic binomial. Just if you want to know the name. Now I'm going to factor this. This is two times five times W times W times W minus two times five. No, it's not 2.5. It's two times five times W and that equals zero. So if I were to break those two terms down, you would see that. It's not a good thing. Well, I shouldn't put it that way. The first thing that we have to do to this is factor. Step one is factor out the greatest common factor. We cut it short, GCF, greatest common factor. And here's what it is. Both of these terms have a two. Both of these terms have a five. Both of these terms have a W. And that's it. Oh my goodness. The GCF. is 2 times 5, that's 10, times W. These terms, 2 times 5 times W, 2 times 5 times W, and I'm going to add something in that I know is there, it's just not important. I mean, we don't normally write it, but it's always understood that there's a times one. Because one times two times five times W is two times five times W, but right now I need it for the following reason. I'm going to rewrite that binomial now. Now it's a binomial, 10 W cubed minus 10 W. I'm going to rewrite that in this form. GCF in front, parentheses, leftovers. Leftovers are always yummy. Okay, the GCF is two times five times W, 10 W. So 10 W, is the GCF. Now, the leftovers are W times W. In fact, a good thing to do is to go ahead and mark through, once you've got your GCF written, mark through everything that you moved out here so that you can clearly see the leftovers. In the first term, you have W times W, that's W squared. And then you have a minus sign. And then you have a one. That's why I needed the one there. And that equals zero. Oh, 
OK, so I'm going to go in steps here. Now I have. Two factors. There are two factors here. One factor. A factor. A factor. Is. 10 W. And. A factor. Is. W squared minus one. Those are both factors of 10 cubed minus 10 W. So I'm I'm going to move over here. And I'm going to write the following 10 W. 10 W equals zero. And W squared minus one equals zero. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Then I'm going to erase that little thingy I made. Yeah. Surgery. OK. Now all I have to do is solve for W. I'm going to divide both sides by 10 and divide both sides by 10. The 10s cancel over here and I'm left with W equals zero divided by 10, which if you put that in your calculator, you'll see that the answer is zero. And this beautiful little thing is called the difference of two squares. W times W is W squared. One times one is one squared. One is one of those beautiful numbers. You have W squared minus one squared. Here's the formula for the difference. Of squares. A squared minus B squared equals a plus B in parentheses times A minus B in parentheses. So the thing squared minus the thing squared equals the thing plus the thing times the thing minus the thing. We're going to write this like that. Boom, 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 boom equals zero. W plus one, W minus one. Now, if you multiply those together, you'll get W squared minus one squared, and one squared is one, so you'll get W minus one, which is what that really is. And now I have to set each factor equal to zero. Minus one, minus one. One minus one is zero. So this will be W equals negative one. And then up here, W minus one equals zero. Add one, add one. Negative one plus one is zero, so W equals zero plus one, which is one. And you have three solutions to this cubic binomial. You're about to learn another secret of the universe. 
whatever the highest power is, you're guaranteed to have that many solutions. So it was totally expected. We go to the answer box, W equals, uh, answer box, blue. Try to make it blue, sometimes I forget. You can have three of them. Zero, negative one, positive one, or you could write them in order, that would be negative one, zero, positive one. But whatever you do, there have to be commas in between, and there have to be three answers. Okay. Now this is getting a little hard. So let's go straight to, well, I'm just going to do these kind of fast for you. Each one of these is a little bit different. I know we need to take a break, but I really want to get to the hardest thing we're going to deal with on this sheet, which is, this is called, oh, it is, it's the A, C method, which is a very good reason for what comes next. So let's just, we can do these really quickly because they're binomials. Okay, so here, this is going to be a problem like the previous one, but again, well, 35R squared equals 5R. And I need to use the zero principle. So I'll subtract 5R and subtract 5R which will give me 35R squared minus 5R equals zero. Okay. Now this is five times seven times R times R minus five times r and since a five is in both terms and an r is in both terms i'm going to need a one an invisible one because one times five times r is five r doesn't change anything to put a times one in but now I'm going to circle everything that these two terms have in common. Both terms have a five. Both terms do not have a seven. Both terms do have an R. So five R is your GCF. You're going to write it in front. 5R. Then make empty parentheses for the leftovers. Um, I'm going to mark through these now that I've got it safely written down there. And now I look at my leftovers. There's an R that's not circled. There's a 7 that's not circled. So in the first term, my leftover is 7R, or my leftovers are 7R, then a minus sign. The 5 and the R are all gone, so that means I have a 1. Then I set each factor equal to 0. 5R equals 0, and 7R minus one 
equals zero. Divide by five. Divide by five. Boom. R equals zero. Zero divided by five is zero. Um, and now seven R minus one equals zero. The first thing I'll do is add a one. Okay, negative one plus one is zero. I'm left with seven R. 7R equals 1. Um, divide by 7. Divide by 7. And so R equals 1 seventh. That's a fraction. It's rational. So it's okay. And our solutions are R equals zero and one seventh. And we are factoring by GCF again, factoring by GCF. So is this one. So I am going to skip that one. We've already done two factoring by GCF. Now we are going to go to the difference of two squares. And this has always been, since I was a student, my absolute favorite. Difference of squares. Now, difference means subtract in math. Difference means, means, no, means subtract. How come I don't have a minus sign there? Well, I haven't subtracted yet. These are equations. I have to use the zero principle. So I'm going to subtract 16 and subtract 16 from both sides of the equation. So S squared minus 16 equals zero. And most of you probably know that 16 equals, among other things, 4 times 4, which is 4 squared. So what I really have here is S squared minus 4 squared equals 0. So to save room, I'm going to come up here now. S squared, squared G will occurs. I get so excited. S squared minus four squared equals zero. Okay, now the thing squared is what we're gonna be working with. Here's the way I learned it. You take the S squared, put one of the S's there, one of the S's there. You take the four squared, put one of the fours there, and one of the fours there. Then you put a plus here and a minus there. And you have now factored S squared minus 16.
Now is when I take each factor and set them equal to zero. S plus four equals zero. S minus four equals zero. Then I just solve each of those little equations. Subtract four from both sides of the equation. Four minus four is zero. So we'll have S equals negative four. And plus four plus four Negative four plus four is zero. So we'll have S equals positive four. So our solutions are gonna be S equals negative four and four. Simple as that. Here we have S squared minus four equals zero. We're gonna do it again. You know that four equals two times two. That's two squared. So we've got S squared minus two squared equals zero. Do this. Take the S squared and split it up. Put it in front. Take the two squared and split it up. One two goes here and one two goes there. And then a plus and then a minus. And then don't forget equals zero. You, the, this is a factor now, and this is a factor of S squared minus four. You set each factor equal to zero. S plus two equals zero. S minus two equals zero. Subtract two, subtract two. S equals negative two. Over here, solve for S by adding two to both sides. Negative two plus two is zero, so that'll leave us an S on the left. 0 plus 2 is 2 on the right. And so the solutions to our equa equation are negative 2 and 2. That's why I love this method. Love it, love it, love it. It's just so fast. Now here we have t squared equals four, but you know we're gonna subtract four, right? So look what that does for us. We basically get the previous problem. t squared minus four equals four minus four, which is zero. This is t squared minus two squared equals zero. Boom, 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 boom equals zero. t, t, two, two plus minus, and we're gonna go through the same stuff we went through before, immediately before, T plus two is zero. T minus two is zero. Reminds me of the old children's song. Actually, it's not a children's song. T for two and two for T. La 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 la. 
minus two minus two. T equals negative two plus two plus two. T equals positive two. Now, what is the AC method? This is what you use, the method you use, the factoring method you use. Well, I'll get it right. Factoring method. When A does not equal one. Now remember, this is a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero. A is five. Five is not one. Oh dear. Yeah, oh dear. Well, we're going to do this thing, and here's how you do it, step by step. One, look for a GCF GCF of all three terms. It faked me out. I thought there was. I thought that was 35. It's not 35, it's 34. If that had been 35, we would have had a five we could have pulled out. But we don't have a GCF. So we go to the next step. Taking out a GCF makes your life much easier. It's actually a good thing. But we don't have one, so we're just going to have to tough it out. I am now going to multiply the A number 5 times the C number 45. A times C equals 5 times 45. Now at this point, I mean, I know I could do this. Five times five is 25, carry the two. Five times four is 20 plus two is 22. Okay, however, it wouldn't, it would not be such a bad idea to go ahead and Use the calculator. First, make sure I'm right. Five times 45. Yep, okay. And then we are gonna do the following. Five times 45 is 225. I am going to click on the very first button below the screen, y equals. Now we're not going to graph anything. Click. All I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say 225 divided by x. x is this little button right here. You don't have to click the alpha key and look for the X. It, it's automatically given to you there. It's the default. Unless you've got a brother or sister or friend who gave you their calculator and they've taken trig and reset it, that should be your default X. Now, the reason I'm doing that is this is going to give me the various factors of 225. Imagine this, different numbers are going in for X. Now, I'm gonna not hit enter. I am going to hit 
I'm not going to hit graph because I don't care what it looks like. I'm totally in this for the numbers. So to get numbers, I click on the second key right here where my mouse is going around and around. Click. And then I click on graph. Is that beautiful? Now I can automatically discount every number that has a decimal in it. And if I do that, then I get a list here of factors of 225. So positive 225, which is what it is, incidentally, I multiplied positive 5 times positive 45. And that gave me 225, so it's still positive. And notice that the number we want is positive. I have to find the factor pair of 225 now that adds up to 34. And there's a real reason for it that I'll tell you. But right now, let's just do it. Let's write down the factors of 225. 1 times 225. And it, 2 gives me a decimal. 3 times 75. And on. Fiddlesticks. There. All right, 3 times 75, 4 gives me a decimal. 5 times 45. Decimal, decimal, decimal. 9 times 25. That's it, incidentally. 9, 9 plus 25 is 34. So we've done it, but we could keep going. Now I'm curious. Ah, uh, down. Okay, I have to go down, 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 down. I should have just moved that over. That's what I'm going to do. Move it over. There. Okay, so now I was I was stopped at 10. Now I'm going down using the down arrow key. 15 times 15, I could add that to the mix. And then if I'm not mistaken, it starts to repeat. Or give all decimals. And then yeah, 25 times nine. Didn't I already say nine times 25? So yes. After 15 times 15, it starts to repeat. So that is the easy way to get factors. You multiply your two numbers by, um, yeah, you multiply A times C, you get a number. Then what I did was I went to Y equals on my calculator, and I said that number, I went to Y1, that number divided by x, and then I hit second graph, which gives me the set of points. If I were graphing 25 over x, uh, uh, 225 over x, but I'm not. Okay, so that's a pretty handy little trick. It does speed things up a little bit. Now, glad I brought the calculator. We'll leave that there if we need it anymore. So already decided that nine plus 25 equals the middle number 34. Now, if there had been a one there, we would just go boom, 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 and stick the numbers in the way we did. We'd be almost done, and 
in one minute or less, we would be done. But this is not A equals one. So we have more steps to do. I'm going to rewrite our equation. 5t squared plus 34t plus 45 equals 0. Now I come to the next line. I write 5t squared and I write plus 45. And there's a gap in here, and this is what I have to do. There's no choice. 34t is going to split apart into plus 25t plus 9t. 25t plus 9t equals 34t. So we have not changed this. We've just rewritten it. And now we're going to use a method. The AC method is over. This was the AC method. We're now going to use a different method called grouping. Here's how you do it. 5t squared plus 25t plus 9t plus 45 equals 0. Here's what I do. I put parentheses around the first two terms. And parentheses around the second two terms, but that plus has got to remain in the center and not belong to any set of parentheses. There. Okay. That's what I have to do. This plus has got to be there in the center. Not, not here, not here, but there. Now, I factor these. I'll have five times T times T plus 5 times 5 times t. So both of these terms have a 5. And both of these terms have a t. I'm not going to bother to put a 1 in here because I will have a 5 left over. I just don't want any naked spaces left over. Plus. I do the same thing here. Now I've got a nine. I know that nine goes evenly into 45. So, um, 45 is five times nine. Now, for these two terms, both of these terms have a 9. So again, I don't have to put a 1 in here because there will be a 5 left over to hold on to that space. 
Now, the GCF of the first two terms, the greatest common factor of the first two terms, uh, of the first two terms is 5t. Both terms have a 5t. I bring it out to the front and write it down, 5t, and then I write parentheses, and then I mark out the 5 and the t, and the 5 and the t. And what I'm left with, my leftovers are t, there's a t here, and a 5 here, and a plus sign here. So t plus 5. Okay. And now I do the same thing back here. Both of these terms have a nine, so the GCF is a nine. I write the nine in front of the parentheses I write next. I mark out the nine in both terms so I don't make a mistake. And then I write T plus five. Now all the hard work is almost over. Look on the left side of this middle plus sign. Look on the left side. Look on the right side. The left side and the right side have a factor in common. T plus five. That's a binomial factor. It has two terms. It's a polynomial. All right, so I'm going to take parentheses T plus 5 and write it in front. Oops, I've been forgetting to write my zeros. Equals 0 equals 0. Parentheses T plus 5 because that's my GCF for the left side and the right side of the plus sign. I'm gonna write it here, and then I'm gonna write parentheses to write the leftovers. And the leftovers are, if I mark out the parentheses T plus five, my leftovers now are five T, plus nine. And those are the factors of 5t squared plus 34t plus 45. Now I set each factor equal to zero and solve. Let's find a good place for that. All right, we'll come over here. T plus five equals zero. And five T plus nine equals zero. Over here, this is easy to solve. You can even do it in your head. Minus five, minus five, 5 minus 5 is 0, so you get t equals 0 minus 5, which is negative 5. That one's done. This one takes a little more cogitating. First, I, you know, I, have, to, I have to isolate my t term, so I subtract 9, and I subtract 9. And what that gives me is 9 minus 9 is 0, so I'm left with 5t equals 0 minus 9 is negative 9. Now I divide by 5, and I divide by 5. So t 
equals negative nine fifths. And so my answers are, my solutions are negative five and negative nine fifths. You see why nobody likes this. And so your answer, we'll write it over, oh, let's not, let's write it over here. Over here by the question. T, is it T? Yeah, T equals negative five, comma, negative nine over five. Wasn't that fun? No, okay. But those are the solutions to this equation, and they're the zeros to f of t equals 5t squared plus 34t plus, 30 plus 45. One more. Oh. Twenty is not a one. It takes real intelligence to know that, I know. Twenty is not one. And two goes into both of these terms, but not into that one. So what are you going to do? Use the zero principle, minus 12 and minus 12, so that you get 20v squared plus 1v minus 12 equals zero. We're going to have to use the AC method, so I'm going to come up here. A times C equals 20 times negative 12 equals negative 240. But you can also get that out of your calculator. Come on, calculator. So I'm going to hit second quit and that takes me back to my blank screen. Why did I do that? I didn't have to do that. I need to clear that by hitting clear. And then if I'm not in the mood to think about anything, this is what I can do. 20 times negative 12 divided by x and really leave all the work to the calculator. And then I hit second, graph. And go back up, because I had come down in my last problem. Error, one. That's what I want. I want to start with one. We need two numbers that add up to one. So let me get the, uh, the thing. I think I turned it off, yeah. So let's turn it back on. Here we have one times negative 240, two times negative 120, three times negative 80. Let's see if we can just look at these and decide which ones add up to positive one. Okay, eight and negative 30, 10 and negative 24. Remember, skip the decimals. Okay. Eight 
Now I'm hitting the down arrow key. Okay, 10 times negative 24, no. 12 times negative 20. 15 times negative 16. I know that would be negative one. So let's take a look at a quicker way to do this by getting help from your calculator. Negative 240, using the calculator. Well, we see that it equals 15 times negative 16. Because it's a negative number, positive times negative is negative, but that means it also equals negative 15 plus uh, times 16. And from here, we don't need the calculator anymore. Be except maybe, maybe, just maybe, you're like me and you don't really completely trust anything or anyone. So let's just make sure 15 times negative 16 is negative 240 and negative 15 times positive 16 is negative 240. Okay. We don't need the calculator anymore, I don't think. If I add negative 15 plus positive 16, that's the same thing as 16 minus 15 which is positive one, which is our number right here. So, one is gonna split apart into negative 15 V plus 16 V, and then I bring down the 20V squared and the minus 12 and the equals zero. And that's the end of AC. AC exists just to give me those two middle terms so that I can do grouping. And that's what I'm going to do now. Seeing how much more. All right, 20V squared minus 15V plus 16v minus 12 equals zero. Now I check for a GCF in both sets of parentheses. I know that five goes into 20 and five goes into 15. So I'm gonna say five times four times V times V minus um, three times five times V plus four goes into each of those 16 and 12. So um, three times uh, uh, four times four times V minus three times four. equals zero. So looking here at V times four times V times V minus three times five times V, both terms have a five and both terms have a V 
and that's it. So 5V is my GCF. I mark out my 5 and my V, and my 5 and my V, and my leftovers are 4V minus 3. Then I come over here and do the same thing. Each of these terms has a 4. Has a 4. So 4 is the GCF, the greatest common factor. Parentheses. Mark out the 4. That leaves me with 4V minus 3 equals 0. Now, once you see that what's in parentheses, these are identical to each other. So you're on the right track. 4V minus 3, 4V minus 3 is now the GCF of the entire problem. So I write it in front, 4V minus 3. And then the leftovers, get rid of that, get rid of that. The leftovers, 5V plus 4 equals 0. And then I set each, each of these factors equal to 0 and solve for V. Four V minus three equals zero. Five V plus four equals zero. And now we go through the steps of solving an equation. Uh, to isolate the, the four V term, I add three to both sides to zero out the three plus three, negative three plus three is really three minus three, it's zero. We're left with a four V equals three. Then we divide by four and divide by four. <clears throat> v equals three fourths. And then we come over here go through the same kind of steps, minus four, minus four, five V equals zero minus four, which is negative four. I marked out the four and the negative four because four minus four is zero. Now I divide by five and I divide by five. So I get V equals negative four fifths. And that means, let's make sure, let's go back and look. Yes, yes. You see how different it is and how much longer it is and how much harder it is when you do not have a one in front of your squared term. That is, when a one is not your leading coefficient. You sort of don't even want to get out of bed on those days. So V equals three-fourths and negative four fifths. Okay, what you're familiar with is something like this. Zero equals R times R minus four. If this number were a zero, 
then what you would do is set each of these factors equal to zero and solve. The problem is 32 is not zero. So here's what we have to do. Thirty two equals R squared minus four R. I have to distribute. Then I have to use the zero principle and subtract thirty two from both sides of the equation. So now we have zero equals r squared minus 4r minus 32. Now we factor. I factor 32. Right, I forgot my own my own hint from earlier. First, I'm going to factor 32 because that's easier. 1 times 32, 2 times 16, 4 times 8, and then I believe we turn around the other way. So this is really far enough. However, of course, we're not dealing with positive 32, we're dealing with negative 32. So let's write down all the factors. Negative one times 32, negative two times 16, negative four times eight, and one times negative 32. 2 times negative 16, and 4 times negative 8. Now that we have all six factor pairs, we can mentally check each one to see which one will equal negative 4 when we add them together, and of course that would be 4 and negative 8 because four plus negative eight equals negative four. So I write R, I write R, I write plus four, I write uh, minus or negative eight, minus eight, because we're now gonna do this, R plus four equals zero and r minus 8 equals 0. Subtract 4 from both sides, you'll get r equals negative 4. Add 8 to both sides, you'll get r equals 8. And those are your solutions to this problem. So I suppose I should come up here and say, okay, then R equals, whoop, negative four and eight. Notice how we started off with positive four and negative eight. Our answers ended up being negative four and positive eight. So don't be fooled. Don't say, okay, well, I guess my solutions to the problem, to the equation are gonna be four and negative eight because they're not. Continue with the whole process. 
OK, now since you're new college algebra students, that's the expectation. We're going to do what might be a completely new form. A factoring method to solve this equation. Notice you have X to the fourth as your leading highest power. That means this is not a quadratic. Oh dear, what am I going to do? Well, when you're lucky, when you're lucky enough to have this power, this exponent, be two times this exponent, because four equals two times two. We can use the, the following really brilliant idea. We're going to let the letter U, which back in the old, old days was the letter mu. In fact, mu looks like that. But then we kind of Americanized it. It said, well, it sort of looks like U even though this Greek letter is the source of our letter M, because look, it goes up, down, up, down. It's where we got the M. However, it does also look like a U, so why not just take the little tail off and make it a U, which is what modern people did. So now we're using U substitution. U equals X squared. Okay, and if I square U, then I have to square X squared. And using the power rule of exponents, whenever you have a base raised to a power, and then the whole thing is raised to another power, you multiply the powers or exponents. So this is X to the fourth. We now see that X to the fourth equals U squared and X squared equals U. And now we have an equation in factored form. Well, it's not in factored form yet. In quadratic form. And now we have an equation in quadratic form. So I can use all of my tricks for dealing with quadratics. Namely, I'm going to factor this. Since the number in front of you is a one, I'm going to factor 100. And I already know 100 equals 25 times four. It also equals one times 100 and two times 50. Neither of those is gonna do me any good. And positive 100 also equals negative 25 times negative 4, because negative times negative is positive. And negative 25 plus negative 4 equals negative 29. Woo! Okay. That happens to be our middle number there. So, I am going to write empty parentheses, separate my U's, and then use my numbers, minus 25 and minus four. Then, I set each factor equal to zero. Whoops. Go through the whole process. Okay. 
Okay, I've set both factors equal to zero. Now, since this is u minus 25, I will add 25 to both sides in order to isolate the u. Okay, I need to get rid of that. I'm left with negative 25 plus 25 is zero, so there's a U. And zero plus 25 is 25. Over here, add four to both sides in order to isolate the U. U equals four. Now don't be tricked. You don't want to think you're done yet because you're not. U is not what you started with. You started with X, so you have to solve for X. U equals X squared. U is X squared. X squared equals 25. And u, which is x squared, equals 4. Now, if I subtract 25 from both sides, I'll have x squared minus 25 equals 0. And over here, I'll subtract 4 from both sides. That will give me x squared minus four equals zero. So you know what? That's X plus five. I'm gonna have to move that over. I'm gonna have to move it over. Then we'll have room to go through the whole process. This is a quadratic binomial and it's a difference of perfect squares. So I'm going to factor by the difference of squares. Parentheses, parentheses, equals zero. I'm gonna continue this line on down. I take my x squared and split it up. And since 25 is five times five, I put a five here and I put a five here, and I put a plus, and I put a minus, and then I set each of those factors equal to zero. X plus five equals zero. X minus five equals zero. Subtract five from both sides of the equation. I'm sure you were thinking both sides of what? All right, zero minus five is negative five. And over here, I add five to both sides. x equals 0 plus 5, which is 5. Now I do the same thing over here. Open parentheses. Put an x and an x. And since 4 is 2 times 2, I'll put a 2 and a 2 and a plus and a minus. And then draw a line and set x plus 2 equal to 0. And x minus 2 equal to 0. And then subtract 2 from both sides. 
and over here, add two to both sides. Boom, 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 boom. Two minus two is zero. So X equals zero minus two, which is negative two. And negative two and two equals zero when they're added. So X equals zero plus two, which is two. <clears throat> and you have four solutions here. X equals I'll wait to draw the box. Negative five and five. And negative two and two. Do you know why? Because the highest power of the original equation is four. Whatever that highest power is, you're going to have that many solutions. And if we take f of x, because I don't want you to forget we talked about this in the beginning, f of x equals x to the fourth minus 29 x squared plus 100. Then the zeros of this function are negative 5 and 5. and negative two and two. And I'm going to graph this for you just so you can see it. Hello, there. I'm going to go to Y equals X caret, that's what that up up uh, arrow is called a carrot like a diamond, x to the fourth, hit the right arrow key to come down, minus 29 x squared, so minus 29 x, and we do have a squared button right there, plus 100. graph. I think I probably should change the dimensions from, I don't know, I'm going to guess. I, I really don't know. Negative 105 no, I don't need that. That's silly. No, no, no. This is the X direction. I'm just going to stay with negative 10 on the left, 10 on the right, and a difference between the numbers of 1 on the X axis. But the Y axis, that's, that's the Y axis, up and down and up and down. So I am going to go from at least in the beginning, until I see I've made a mistake, negative 100, no, negative 105, to positive 105, and I'm going to make the scale, the distance between each number, I'm going to let it be five, and I might increase it to 10. In fact, I am going to make it 10. 1, 0. Here we go. Hold your breath.
pretty good. OK, going back to the window and I'm going to let my Y min as low as I can see. I'm going to change that to negative 110. Let's see. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. Negative five, negative two, and two, and five. Those are <clears throat> the points on the x-axis where the graph crosses the x-axis. Which, when the zeros are real numbers and not complex numbers, that's exactly what these are. They're the x-coordinates of the x-intercepts. And these numbers are where the graph crosses the x-axis. So at x equals negative 5, x equals negative 2, x equals positive 2, and x equals positive 5. And the x-intercepts written as points are negative 5, 0, negative 2, comma 0, 2 comma 0, and 5 comma 0. See how important zeros are. We're going to be dealing with these more and more. But for now, I'll say goodbye.